There's video showing a kidnapped teenager being gunned down by police. Per the Daily Beast, newly released video shows the moment an unarmed 15 year old Savannah Graziano was fatally shot by police in Hesperia, California. This was almost two years ago after she had allegedly been kidnapped by her father. Just devastating. Let's give you the footage that was released by. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Units back up, it takes the cover, takes the cover. We have zero back drop on the southbound lane. Take your cover. Put out those shots are being fired. Set. Shots are fired, shots are fired. Continue to shoot at the deputy. Close out. We will now play a belt recording from the deputy closest to Savannah when she exited the pickup truck. You can hear him calling her over and telling other deputies that the person who exited the truck was the passenger and for them to stop firing, but it was too late. Passenger, get out! Passenger, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Passenger, get out! Get out! Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here! Come here. Hey, hey, hey! Come here! Come to me! Come to me! Come to me! Come to me! Go, 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 go! Walk, 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 walk! Hey! Stop! Stop shooting at her! He's in the car! Devastating. A little girl trying to just take instruction in the middle of chaos and indiscriminate shooting. And maybe that's unfair to say. Uh, With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. September 26, 2022, Savannah watched her father, 45 year old Anthony Graziano, shoot and kill her mother, Tracy Martinez, strange wife, outside of school. After which the father reportedly abducted the teen and went on the run. Amber Alert was issued. The cops tasked with rescuing Savannah spotted Graziano's truck the following day. After a high speed chase lasting some 70 miles, San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies boxed in the vehicle on an embankment off a freeway in Hesperia, roughly 80 miles east of Los Angeles. Shots were fired at the pursuing deputies from inside the truck, some of which authorities claimed had come from the passenger side where Savannah was sitting, the Daily Beast with some details for us. In video footage released by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department pursuant to a records request, Officers can be heard saying that bullets are flying, telling other to take your cover. Savannah is then ordered out of the truck by deputies. She exits from the truck, crouches down on the highway shoulder. She was reportedly wearing tactical gear, although her attire is not clearly visible in the aerial footage. Still on the right shows what Savannah was last seen wearing before the incident from a gas station security camera. As Savannah begins walking toward deputy, she is gunned down. The deputy who was shouting at her to walk towards him now begins to yell at his fellow officers. And the police dispatcher can be heard saying, "Oh no. Savannah was taken to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. Her father was shot and killed at the scene. Deputies said they recovered numerous guns, hundreds of rounds of ammo, flashbangs, smoke grenades, tactical helmets, and body armor from Graziano's truck. Savannah's uncle told the Guardian that his niece didn't have to die. There needs to be better training so that unarmed people aren't killed, CJ Wyatt told the outlet. Hopefully this video can be used for training. Something has to be done differently. 
And maybe we need to start there and, and go backwards. CJ Wyatt, the uncle who lost such a wonderfully filled with hope. Because that's what 12 years, 12 year olds are. Even one who apparently was existing in a domestically challenged family. You don't just go kill a mother and abduct a child if there's not something else going on in the family. I'm conflicted because of the tactical gear police say that the child was wearing. Amber alert issue though, you knew you were looking for a child. And you knew that someone had just done, you believe, something heinous and shooting down the mother in front of that child. Perhaps getting eyes on the vehicles where I'm headed doesn't necessarily mean everything has to be a, a chase. A more tactical approach, perhaps, catching someone when they can do less harm, catching someone off guard. This is all, sure, hindsight. But I'm just not willing to say that this had to go down like this, Yasmin. Uh, yeah, so she was complying, the little girl, right? She was told to get out of the car and to walk towards them, and then they shot her. Um, this will seem irrelevant, right? But um, you got to bear with me for a minute. I got a speeding ticket recently, so I'm currently doing defensive driving, right? Uh, it's taking me a while to get through it, though, because it's so mind-numbing. It's six hours long. I've done four hours of it so far. But apart from being so boring, it's actually a little bit maddening. And the reason why it's maddening is because it almost feels like propaganda, right? It acknowledges how dangerous our system is by design, and it emphasizes how much personal responsibility is required from so many individuals at any given time all at once, right? In order for people to not get hurt or die. And instead of building a better system, instead of acknowledging the flaws in the system and building it better, their solution is just to, I get guess, like just pull people over for speeding one by one and make them take this course and make sure everyone is doing everything absolutely right, absolutely all of the time so that other people won't die. And they know that that's an unrealistic expectation because they're constantly giving you stats about how many accidents have happened because of X, Y, or Z and how many people have died because of X, Y, or Z. And in this story, at the end of it, at the end of the Daily Beast article, they're telling you, you know what? They need better training. It wasn't, it was, it was a quote. It wasn't the author who said that, but they said, you know, these cops need to better training. We have to train our cops better. And I'm just not buying it. I'm not buying that every cop, absolutely all of the time, there is no room for error because in those room, they, in those errors, people are dying. You know, 15 year old girls are dying. And I just, it, it, it's not a good enough argument to say, oh, this was a bad apple. Oh, this was a bad incident. Oh, this was an accident because people are dying. Right. Yeah. So fix it, you know, find a way to fix it, fix the system. You know, they have these guns, they have uh, lethal weapons that they have access to, and they're just way too trigger happy with it. And the solution is, well, oh, you know, we have to address the trauma of the cops. We have to make sure that emotionally they're in a right place all the time. We need to make sure that the cops are controlling their emotions in these very, very stressful situations. It is unrealistic. And we know it's unrealistic because we see that it's not working. People are still dying unnecessarily. And I, and again, I acknowledge I might be being unfair using the word indiscriminate. I heard just shots coming from everywhere. And I'm not excusing the, the suspect now, now dead. But if you're just shooting, you didn't even know who that was you were opening fire, but you knew the father had kidnapped the daughter. You knew that. And at least one of you laid eyes and recognized and, I just am not willing to say there was no way out of this. Track him. Don't corner him. He's already done this. Figure it out. Hotel, uh, sleep break, something where life can be preserved. And there's, if any police officers, and look, some police officers do what? PYT, okay? Dr. Ritchie hears from them too. Mm -hmm. It's just a uniform for some people, but that's not necessarily this group thing that they're interested in. And they will tell you, and maybe they're screaming at me right now that you've never been trained, you don't know what you're talking about. And when you get in that situation, and maybe they're right. But I'm just saying, I just, 
if, if there can't be a better way, then what are we doing here? Would she have been better off another day or so with this madman? I don't know. But we'll never know now, will we? I'll give you the last word, Yasmin. Yeah, I mean, to your point, that's exactly what I was talking about. You know, I I know a lot of cops personally. Um, I you know beat cops, and I know people up at the city level and the county level. And I'm not going to say that they're bad people, or I'm not going to say that they're bad at their jobs. What I'm saying is that if these accidents are happening far too frequently, far too often, right? Then do something about it, right? We cannot rely on these cops being 100% perfect at their jobs 100% of the time because that is completely unrealistic. You and I are not 100% perfect at our jobs 100% of the time. In our job, 63% here. Like, I mean, I, I don't even know from 63% it's very today. You know, but but you're right. That, you know, like, and we have far less stressful jobs than the these officers do. So all that needs to be taken into account. But so much of the systems that we have in place right now try to act like all those human emotions can just be tamped down forever, all the time, every time. And we know that that is it's not possible. We can't do that. Yeah. Um, it's it's devastating to, to see that again a records request. They didn't probably want to release that, like so many other things. But I don't. I agree with you. More training. More. Figure it out, please. So a twelve year old who's already experienced such trauma stays with us. Um, it's devastating. We're going to move on. How about one other thing, Yasmin, before we move on. You know these officers, you have these people that you're familiar with in law enforcement. They should have helped you get out of the ticket. Now I'm just gonna say that. They should have got you out of the ticket. I had a friend who had to go through that six hours of, it's a, it's, do you really care about safety or is it the money? Because those programs are expensive and la, you know, da, 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 da. right. And I really, I don't speed that often. My parents yeah. are watching; they're gonna, they're gonna contest this. But no, I, it's I believe you. Never been in the car with you, but I, you don't look like the type who does it. I don't believe I you're control. burning rubber. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah. Pretty, you were, pretty, yeah. Pretty, it's just, it's yeah. Just one thing, and who knows if their radar was right? Okay, now I'm going down. I also am over. bad. I'm I'm also really bad at you know asking for favors like that. Yeah. So like I'll never ask. Oh, I don't if, either. If I have a cop. I would never be like, hey, yeah. I, I would never. Yeah. But. Well, I will tell you this. It's and then we'll move on. If it happens again, and again, I don't believe you were speeding, and if you were, so what? Did you're you you know you would have slowed down. But I want you to just as soon as they roll the window down and just say, oh my goodness. Please give me a ticket. I deserve it. And I can assure you, you won't get one. Take it from a friend. You won't get it. You just say, no, please. I want that's, you to that's, I mean, that's, that's a good line. That's what it, you do. I, I can't believe happen. I did this. And then, and when they let you up, say, well, thank you. You'd be safe. Okay. I did get and out of the ticket one time by acknowledging. Just, he just asked me, do you know why you pulled me over? Why I pulled you over? And I said, yes, I know. And then yeah. he commended yeah, me for my honesty. <laughs> right. I know what I did, and you're in charge. Okay. 